So, anyways, since 2023 is coming to a close and all, as far as that goes, in a way, I wanted to talk more about in terms of technology because it just seems kind of know, strange how, you know, what was going on like, you know, five years ago and then 10 years ago, then 15 years ago, and 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and 30 and 35 years ago at that point. Because that's like the first I could really go go back, you know, like 35 years ago. You know what I mean? Even though 35 years ago, if since I'm going to be rounded up to like 2024 that point so like 84 I was like 3 and so at that time when it comes to in terms of technology you know, most people didn't really have any computers it's, it was only like the the business types had a computer and it was just like what I'm looking at now like a cell phone because cell phones weren't even a thing at that point or let alone like that ah, because there was like the whole uh, it was like the Motorola attack because it was it was one of those cell phones that was like is that big and all you can do is just make calls and that was it you know as far as that goes and at that one point back in, I think it was like 89 my dad had a car phone so it was just a way where we can call people when we're on the go of that sort and you know that was one of the things there and then if he wanted to like Recorded videos we had to have like camcorder, but those were like the VHS camcorders and they were kind of a bit bulky. And so they also have like VHS C, which is VHS compact and all. But that time, that was when they had like um, America's Funniest Home Videos that, that started to become a thing you know, back in like 89, 90, sort of thing there. When Bob Saget was still alive at that time, you know. And then let's see, like, as far as that goes, I think computers were were not really that much. They were still kind of a luxury at that point, because the whole cost of producing like the computers was still that much you know and at that time I think it was like at the end of 89 was that was when um, my family had a computer and it was just that 286 computer and so mainly dad used it to help um, manage his business at that point because he because he ran a um, he ran a car rental business, you know, the Ugly Duckling, and so he mainly used the, the computer to do that, and so, of course, it was like, he had to have, like, a second phone line, so that way we can, he can do his, his on, do, like, the whole transactions over the phone, that sort of thing, when it came to that, and, was we gotten ourselves like a modem when it came to the next computer which was like a 386 and we got that around night three at that point and at that time it was like when you had to configure like the different uh, peripherals and stuff you know when it came to the modem and all that so then you had to like do the whole 
certain things with the depth switches to kind of make sure it, it, it gets assigned to, you know, whatever uh, logical port that would be rather than like the physical port, you know, and that was just one of the problems, you know, because you have to do this pattern to get to COM1 or this to COM2 or whatever, and then when it comes to like the, the mice, you know, we had to have like a serial mice or a parallel mice, and then opposed to how it is nowadays, it's all USB, and the same way when it came to like the keyboard, you know, because you had that, the PS2 uh, connector, as far as that goes, or the PS2 mice is another one that makes it a whole lot easier. You had like a PS2 mice instead of a serial mice or a parallel mice. I forgot if that was parallel for it or whatever it was, but besides the whole point. And then, of course, with the hard drive with like the whole bulky ribbon cables and make sure that it's set on the right thing, or whether it's server or client. You know, it wasn't really like the whole, um, whatchamacallit, the SATA. The SATA connectors, because SATA, I don't even know if the SATA is still being used at that point. You know, when it comes to the PC building community and all. So, considering all that, and then there, of course there was like Sound Blaster, because that was like the other thing you had to configure when it comes to Sound Blaster and all the other ones. To make sure it's like, in the case with the modem, so it was like... You know, for that it was like, you have to make sure it's on this input-output address, this DMA channel, this interrupt request number, of that sort. So that way it gets assigned to the appropriate uh, logical port. You yeah. know. So that was like the thing there. Then came to like the plug-and-play stuff. And that was kind of like how it was like in the mid to late 90s when when everybody else was now getting on the internet at that point when it came to like the to that sort. And at that point that was where you know dial up was no longer being feasible because everybody's everybody's on. And the the problem there was you know, when it came to dial-up, you know, then you couldn't really be online and use the phone at the same time. You know, and that was when the whole DSL and uh, cable had started to become a thing. You know, because you had, like, the two dial-up ISPs at that one point, and it was until, like, you know, Years later, when we got on Cox and all, when they had the cable internet, and at that time, it wasn't really available for all Cox customers at that point, when they had Cox at home, because at home was like, was when they started doing like cable internet, and then that was when it fell apart back in the one, you know, and so a lot of people, they had their Cox at home modems. They had to like change, you know, the sort of thing, or get like, or get the transition kit or whatever it was. So then they had to have, have that way, whether they had an Ethernet cable modem or a USB cable modem, because at that time it was like there was just USB 1.0 before like 2.0 became a thing, and then now 3.0 and whatever the newer ones that they have, you know, like 4.0, where you can transfer a gig, that sort. But then, you know, the interesting thing at this point, you know, not just the whole peripherals there, because, you know, they don't really have to do, like, you know, HDMI cable, like, for a, a monitor at that point anyways, we can do... 
have a monitor connected you know, solely on USB-C, you know, and it would be like the monitor and then having like the touch screen, all of that. Because that was one of the whole things when it came to like a touch screen monitor, you would have USB, USB-C, or, US, or just a regular standard USB um, cable at that point. Or for that, you know, you know, and then whether if it's like the DVI cable or HDMI or something like that, and it's just like when it came to, you know, the the new uh, the newer TVs at this point. Now it's like, you know, we don't really have to have like the coax thing there because it's like the last. Um, the last uh, TVs that that we had had like had like a little US little uh, coaxial cable port there just for like TV, but then it would have the um, it would have a um, a uh, what you call it a a HDMI cable port or the the component cable uh, port as far as that goes because then component video is like the other thing that works for a HD but it doesn't do like 4k or 8k or whatever it is at that point you know and that was like the thing there because for me when I first started doing the the videos here I was doing like eight eight uh like 4k or 8k but then but I had stopped doing it because you know there just wasn't really a need for that and when you know HD is good enough you know as far as like 720p is good enough or even 1080p is good enough, you know, as far as that goes, and it was one of the things that I remember back about a little bit more than 10 years ago, because it was one of the things that it took me a while for me to render a HD video, and, and when it came to 720p, you know, back 10 years ago, was when I got in that that GeForce or the, the GTX 200 model or whatever it was at that time, you know, that one was can render a certain video like that, like to like the 720p, like like at five megabits per second and. You know, but for like a 10 minute video that I would do, it would take about like an hour or something like that. And, and plus, it was just one of the videos that I had that was a really long one. It took a long time. And I just, you know, didn't have my own computer to do videos. You know, but that was just the thing. And that was back when I gotten, you know, Sony Vegas, I think it was seven or eight or nine or one of those. And it was the one where, you know, it cost like $500 at that point. And a lot of people who did like YouTube poops and all of that at the time, you know, we'd rather just, you know, get it illegally, you know, then rather than shell out that many money for that matter when you know we could have also realized there are other programs that we could do that could do the same kind of effects and all that that would cost a whole lot less you know especially if we're like YouTube poopers or whatever it is you know so that was like the thing there so anyways I guess that's 
probably did, you know. So talk to you guys later.